Welcome to Mr. Woods Teaches Middle School Math Survival Guide. I'm Fred Woods, ready to teach. Hello fellow mathematicians, this is Mr. Woods Teaches, and today we're working on sixth grade math for the greatest common factor. With the greatest common factor of math, you have to know some vocabulary, or in some instances, here we go, it says GCF. What does that mean? Well, that's greatest common factor. What factors are, what a product is, sum, common factors. What does greatest mean? Express the sum, product, factorization, difference, distributive property. These are things that you need to stop, pause this, write one at a time down, look it up, write down the definition, and write one to two examples so that it gets it into your mindset inside of that composition book I've been telling you to have. You need to have that. That's separate from your math book. It's separate from your math notebook. This is your vocabulary reference. Number one, list the factors of 12 and 20. Circle the GCF or the greatest common factor. Well, many times you're gonna see it on a test like this. If you have space, I highly recommend is that instead of doing it here like this going across, you do it down and I'll, I'm going to make this simple for me so that you can see it easier. Notice how I put where it says factors of 12 and factors of 20, how they're side by side as opposed to one on top of the other. And the reason for that is because what is a factor? Well, a factor, if you recall from number bonds, is that you have a number here, number here, here, and if I have a five here and a four here, that number bond for multiplication is going to be five times four is 20 or 4 times 5 is 20, or 20 divided by 5 is 4, or 20 divided by 4 is 5. See how that works? So these are factors, but there are other factors for 20. Let's take a look. Let's start off first with factors of 12. So I have 1 times 12, so 1 right there. It's divisible by 2 as well, so 2 times 6, 3 times 4, right? And again, I can have it here where it's 4 times 3, and you get the idea of where I'm going with this. These are the factors that I'm creating. But to make it so that it's more readable and legible, I'm going to stop this for a moment and put it all up in line. Okay, this is a little bit cleaner so that you can read the numbers clearly and you can see what's going on. So all of these are the factors, but many times your teacher wants to see it a different way and they'll want to have it in order. So it's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 12. And those are the factors for 12 right here. Let's look at the factors for 20. Well, the factors for 20 are 1, 2, 4, 5, 10, 20. And what we're looking for is the greatest common factor. So we can see that there's common factors here. That 1's a common factor, 2's a common factor, 4 is a common factor. Are there any other common factors? No. So what I can do is I'm going to circle here. This is the greatest one. It's the largest number that is common factor between 12 and 20. So there we go. So circle the GCF. There it is right here. Let's practice again. Over here, it says here for 16 and 18. We go through the same process. However, if you know your multiplication tables, you're able to do this much more quickly. So I know that if I put down 16, and I'm just going to do a, a colon here or semicolon, and I know that 1 is it, 2, 3 is not, because 3 times something does not make 16. So I know 4 is. Is 5? No. Is 6? No. 7? No. 8? Yes. 8? 9? No. 10? No. 11? 12? 13? 14? No. And 16. Because 1 times 16 is 16. 2 times 8 is that. 4 times 4. See where we're going with this? Now if I did it for 18, same thing. 18. 1 is a factor. 2 is as well. Is 3? Yes. Is 4? No. 5? No. 6? Yes. 7? No. 8? No. 9? Yes. 10? 11? 12? 13? 14? 15? No. 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 And that goes all the way up to 18. So my greatest common, because these are common, these are common, and these are common, is going to be what? What do you think it's going to be? Is it 2? Is that it? Are you sure? Yes. 2 is it, because there are no other numbers that are common in both of these factorizations for 16 and 18. Let's continue our practice. So GCF 25 and 40. Now here you're like, well, wait a minute, 25, there's like not too many of them. So let's just do it again. Let's just go through. So 25, so there's one, two, no, three, no, four. I know it's five and 25. That's it. And then for 40, so 40, I have one, two, because two times 20 is 43, no, four, yes, four times 10, 5, yes, times 8, 
6, no, uh, 7, 8, I want to say 8 is because 5 times 8, and then 9, nope, 10, yes, 20, and 40. A little bit longer line of factors, but we're looking for the greatest common factor, and that's going to be 5 here. Let's look at number four. I have factors of 36. What are the factors of 36? Again, my knowledge of multiplication, 1 times 36, 2 times 18, 3 times 12. Then I have 4 times 9, which is 36. 5, nope, 6, yes, because 6 times 6 is 36. 7, no, 8, no, 9, yes, because there's that 4 times 9. 12, because remember we did 3 times 12, 2 times 18, and finally 36. Is 1 times 36 is it. Let's repeat this for 90 as well. So I have 1 times 90, 2 times 45, 3 times 30, 5 times what? 5 times 15 is 75. So 5 times 16 is 80. 5 times 17 is 85. And 5 times 18, which that's going to be a factor later on here, is going to be 90. So there we go. So I have 6. 6 times 15, that's going to be 90. 9 times 10, and then we have 10. And then what we discussed earlier is that 6 times 15, 5 times 18, 3 times 30, and then 2 times 45, and 1 times 90. So let's take a look. 1s, yes, 2s, 3s, nope, yes, yes, nope. There's a 15 there, but there's an 18 there. That looks promising. 36, that's ended. So it's going to be 18. And now maybe circling it, but I can write down greatest common factor equals 18. So that's clear and unambiguous. Over here, it could be, oh wait, did he circle four? Is this mostly five? What's going on here? But this makes it so that the teacher knows that you understand what GCF means using the equality sign, and then 18, even after doing this. Number five, Camila is making prizes for a game at the school fair. She has two bags of different pins one with 15 square pins and one with 20 round pins. Every prize will have one kind of pin. Each prize will have the same number of pins. What is the greatest number of pins Camila can put in each prize? So we're trying to find that greatest common factor. We could have said, well, what's the least common multiple, but we want to have the greatest number. So let's do the factors. So I'm just gonna say factors. So I'm gonna put F factors and work with 15. 1 times 15, 3 times 5, and there's that 5, and then 15. I'm going to factor 20. 1 times 20, 2 times 10, 4 times 5, there's that 5, 10, and 1 times 20. So the greatest common factor is going to be 5 here, and we can say that the GCF equals 5, but are we done? No, we actually need to explain the answer. Here, I've written it out. The greatest number of pins Camila can put in each prize is five. See how that answers it? This gives you the number that's gonna be that greatest number, but we need to explain it because it says here, what is the greatest number of pins Camila can put in each prize? And look at this. The greatest number of pins, the greatest number of pins Camila can put in each prize can put in each prize is. This is where I'm getting that sentence from. So that is the answer for the question, not just finding out the number. Number six, Emilio is a pet shop manager. He wants the same number of birds in each cage. He wants to use as few cages as possible, but can only have one type of bird in each cage. If he has 42 parakeets and 18 canaries, how many birds will he put in each cage? Well, let's see here. That's the same number of birds in each cage, few cages as possible, only one type of bird in each cage, and if he has 42 parakeets and 18 canaries. So those are our numbers that we need to find the greatest common factor for. Well, let's take a look. So let's start out with 42. And that's going to be 1 times 42, 2 times 21. Is there a 3 in there? Yes, because if 2 times 14 is 28, add another 14, and that's going to give me 42. 3, and then 6, because 6 times 7 is 42. 7 is a 14, because we were just talking about that, with that 3 times 14. And then 21, 2 times 21, and 1 times 42. So those are all the factors for 42. Let's factor 18. Again, we go with 1 times 18, 2 times 9, 
3 times 6, and then we have uh, that 9 there, and then 18. What's the greatest common factor? 1, 2, 3, there's 6. Is there a 9 up here, 18 up there? No, nope, it's going to be 6. So the GCF, the greatest common factor, equals 6. Are we done? No. What I've written here is that Emilio would put 6 birds in each cage. Same number of birds in each cage, so I just did that. 6 is the same number, and this is just saying that what he's going to be doing. If you're unsure about some of the mathematics that I've shown here, or the terminology, please go back into my YouTube channel here, do a search on one of the terms, because most of the time I went through and I looked at all the vocabulary I used, I put that as a keyword or something in there for the search, and you can go in there and find exactly what you're looking for. Remember, practice, 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 create your mathematics dictionary where you can write down words definitions and have examples. Thank you for watching Mr. Woods Teaches. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. Watch me correct my mistakes on TikTok at Mr. Woods Teaches. Till next time, remember to be a math person. All you have to be is a person that does math.